Hi, welcome back to the Dylan Rounds case. Welcome if you're currently here in the live premiere. We're finally returning back to the Dylan Rounds case, continuing on with that. We're actually looking back today with an interesting map analysis, the return of the deep map analysis of multiple locations of possible interest, kind of like what we did with Lucerne and Montello, okay? And it's to do with the 29th of May, 2022, what was Don Hatley Brenner doing on that day? We have briefly had a look at it in the past, but it seemed to have been debunked or countered by people like Taylina and maybe some others in between. This time around, we're looking at a different event, a different location and environment, okay? So we've got that to get through, which is kind of interesting. We can also check the comments out of previous Dylan Rounds video I did, as well as the last video too. Um, I guess we have a little look at the start of this video, answer a few questions and see if there's any interesting information and then we can look at some more much later on, okay? So feel free to share your thoughts, opinions, reactions in the live chat on the right hand side and we, we go from there. Uh, shout out to Badger, once again, very good individual and for their presence as well as uh, Sheed Show. So uh, Sheed Show, um, as I said, I'll post photos of different flowers regarding that custom emoji. You said wet petals. I assume that's just simply flowers that are wet, unless it's a type of plant. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> it might be very s uh, simple to term, but maybe I'm overthinking things. But I'll just get a selection of some of like the plant photos I've taken so we can find some of the better ones and then just like post them all in a collection and then like either vote which one. I think you can do a poll in the community tab, a picture poll, okay? I guess it just depends how many options. In the picture poll, polls, you can only have four options, right? So four photos. Um, what, what I will see is, is how many photos can you post just as in a normal post, right? It's the one where you just like select so many and then you can like scroll through them by swiping on the screen. I have done it in the past. I just want to check how many, what's the max limit. If I can do more, then I'll post it there and then I can say in the comment section, um, one to 10, choose which number you would like to see as a custom emoji next, okay? And, um, yeah, that, that's just what I want to say as a little heads up, okay? Um, and overall, this uh, Dylan Rounds video was going to be coming yesterday, but we had some, um, if you want to call it breaking news, that's why we covered it yesterday. If you haven't already checked it out regarding Salty Pancakes and charges being pressed on him by supposedly Jim Terry, make sure to check the link out down below in the pinned comment section, okay? Um, and yeah, just in general, what I, what I also wanted to acknowledge was I think maybe at some point what I will do, um, yeah, I've, I've probably done it before, but not with like the same intent. What I want to do is a bit more of a lighthearted video, zero Fs given, okay, just like with the title and the thumbnail and think, screw it, you know. In the past, I might have put in a thousand percent effort. It didn't equal success. So why not just, you know, do something very casual and loose, but fun, okay? Badger recently talked about degens and dogs. We combine both together, doggy daycare. So it's a good idea by Badger. We can incorporate it around that, okay? So whenever it does come, yes, it won't be about Dylan Rouse. You, you know, you could have a little discussion in between about it in the chat, of course, but I don't think I would talk about it in a video just simply because, you know, information and discussions about the case should be easy to find and locate and if it's in a video which is poorly titled it just doesn't seem appropriate so that's why I wouldn't include it there but you know all the other random stuff I would okay I mean like last night nothing to do with Dylan Rounds well hardly to do with Dylan Rounds let's say not even titled or hashtags or tags used but there was a it was about at one point a hundred people watching. So it just goes to show that it doesn't always have to be about Dylan Rounds for it to, I guess, perform if you want to call it that. But you know, equally, it, it will be down to certain topics and names mentioned as to why it happens. You know, it is what it is. 
So, you know, you do a bit of loose stuff, you do a bit of focus stuff, why not? So, uh, yeah, when will I get it done? Maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after, of course. But, you know, if there is any breaking news, if there is any additional Dylan Rounds videos or ideas, they will be covered, first of all, because that's more serious stuff. And, you know, if there is something to cover, it needs to, it needs to be done, right? So, uh, yeah. Um, anything else to highlight? I mean, uh, Bob Farrell responded. Okay, so we'll check what his comment is about later on in this video. Um, saw Miss T something about Graham not being voted out of D Gen Island. I mean, I mean, I, I could talk, but then it'll, it'll just cause like a lot of disruption and curse. Like, come on, Graham, not biggest D Gen going more of a D Gen than an upside down shed. Simple as. Uh, because Graham's been voted off now, he's hiding in a barn, cry crying and cuddling up with a cow or maybe a bull. He probably got the wrong one. He's probably trying to get a nose piercing as well. One of those, was it septic ones? Was septic what you get in a tank with acid? Ooh, I don't know. Oh well. Uh, Dale, you know, he's still keeping his headphones on. Hopefully he takes them off at some point because if you leave them on too long, it'll create a bit of an indentation in the head. Okay. Also, went a little bit dodgy last night. I actually did... Um, a couple of short videos back to back, just kind of random, kind of near the, or within the dark Shake Shack shed. Okay, feel free to check them out. One of them was aimed towards Inky, just a brief little question. Inky, if you're watching right now, feel free to check back over onto um, the short and um, answer the question if you want. Uh, but do you know what I wanna say as a very important point, okay? Last night's video, not only was 100 people watching and it wasn't anything to do with Dylan Rounds, but equally, there was no tension. There was virtually no drama. No nothing, okay? People did say that there's possibilities that it could go a bit downhill and it could get nasty, okay? You start covering certain topics, subjects and themes which normally is about and encapsulate, encapsulates conflict and tension yeah it was the complete opposite last night you know even watch her crazy when she was just simply sharing her thoughts and her sides of the story didn't really lead to anything it was just very under control okay and i did say in a video that you know if drama does happen it is what it is because of what's being talked about yeah it didn't happen you know who knows who was watching at the time you know, okay, so many people chatting in the chat, but then the rest will be watching in the background, listening in, lurking in the darkness, whatever. But didn't really go wrong. It didn't. It was good, okay? So once again, I've demonstrated that it can be done. But just maybe, just maybe, that you need to be in a certain format. And the more I think about it now, it does make sense, right? Look at it like this. Hopefully everyone is focusing because it's an important point to make as an observation, right? When it comes to different formats, live stream, interacting with a select few people on panel, okay, people joining on in, talking verbally, and then a live video premiere, pre-recorded, edited, one-man band, such as in this case, presented to a live audience who can participate in the chat all equally. You see the difference? One's equal, the other one isn't. Some people have a voice. The rest don't exactly have a voice, but they've got other means, typing, okay? So one's verbal communication, the other one is just text base. But the text based communication, everyone has the same amount of opportunities and chances, and it's more equal, it's more balanced, okay? No one's on a pedestal in that sense, right? Um, yeah, I think, well, I was, I was gonna add in some clever wording there, but I clearly failed. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? When um, you've got the live streams and the live call-ins, okay? You've got people up here with some others talking, and then the rest of the people are down here at the bottom. Whereas in a live video premiere, I might be here, earlier on because I was the one making it and then presenting it to everyone else who's here, watching it collectively, all reacting with their own thoughts and ideas. And it's not as competitive, okay? Maybe 
maybe when it comes to the live stream call-in format, a bit more competitiveness. Oh, I want to appear on panel. No, take that person down. I want to be put in place of them. Replace that individual. You get what I'm saying? Whereas when it comes to just the simple live chat box, there's no like order or tear or um, podium. There's none of that. So maybe that's what works. And as well, you think about it, like with the whole power control, some people get a bit power hungry, like with the mod situation elsewhere. It can just happen with one's personality. With the Dylan Rounds case and external, you got some strong personalities and different characters. If they're given the chance and given the voice to talk, they'll take grasp of it and that's where it can get out of hand. If you can restrain those individuals from having that chance and putting them in their mindset, in the pit, like everybody else, it's all very balanced. You know, you, what you're kind of doing in a live video premiere format, you're castrating people from being able to dominate and take over. This is a form of castration, okay? So that's why it's under control, okay? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think what we'll do now, a bit out of context, but... Let's just focus back on to Dylan Rounds. As I said, welcome if you have joined. What we are gonna do is just look back at previous comments, answer questions, see if there's additional interesting information and go from there. Once that's done, we can head on over to Google Earth, do a map analysis of all known possible locations of where the likes of Don Hatley, Brenner could have gone fishing and the true meaning behind it. Make sure to stick around to understand the full story, okay? Here we are with the first set of comments arranged to the newest, start from the bottom and work our way up. So what's this? Probably one of my, oh yeah, the thumbnails. I, I would say that in more recent time, I, I am more pleased with the thumbnails I create, even just simply going onto my channel and, you know, looking back at the video library section, it just looks more colourful, but not tacky, okay? It kind of reminds me of when I was doing the cinematic videos in the past, the information and details were made specifically for the viewers and the cinematic part was more for me seeing what am I capable of and it worked out at the time and it's, you know, if you look back at the odd video, you know, it, sometimes it can surprise you. Got John Lammy saying, loving the content, Raph. So that's good. It's good that the person likes the stuff. Long time viewer, Kenny Veach one. Um, the way I say it is, when it came to the Kenny Veach case, maybe the style and format was a bit different, maybe it, arguably more editing and time put in there, but that's just because of how the case was and how one was working with the material there. But if people present then who have still continued watching now and acknowledge that the videos are still okay and somewhat interesting, that's obviously a good sign as well because of the maybe the, the changes of coverage how they've evolved as well. Just as a little heads up, if anyone's wondering why maybe things have changed with time, it's because one, got to be careful with music. Copyright is very toxic on YouTube, as some of you will know, um, because videos have been coming out almost every single day for the really cinematic stuff. It's just not practical as for stamp. Well, maybe it's probably doable, but it's just not practical and a bit too much, a bit OTT. As long as the information and details are worded and described clearly. I think that's what matters the most. Um, what else do we have here? We've got Robert Berger. So Robert Berger does play a bit of a role in this video from what he said previously regarding certain locations and spots, which will make more sense later on. Here he says, contact Candice about that. I don't know what he's referring to there. Tom saying, thank you for some answers. I still think the pond, the truck leaving the property at 3 p.m. and Don and Robert Hatley, Robert, you mean uh, Robert Avilas, are the important pieces to this case. Oh, are you talking about Robert, i.e. like a son of Don? Anyway, good. I'm bigger than you. <laughs> how, how do I interpret that? <laughs> okay. Well, so we got Weezer. I got interrupted, so I'm watching Robert Bergener is referring to a package. How many Roberts have we got? I thought we had the burger apocalypse. Now we've got a Robert one. Okay. Oh, so package 
Dylan got at Independence Valley. I remember the mention of it in the early days. The comment had nothing to do with Lance. So that's a little clear up there. As I talked about a few days ago, it was basically what Dylan Rounds received, not Lance Kelly. Okay, so that's good for uh, Weezer to clear that up. What does Indiana say? Wasn't the FedEx parcel that was sent to Independence Valley pivot parts that Dylan ordered prior to his death? Hmm, maybe. I commented several times on the FedEx package attempted delivery. Yeah, you did comment several times, but you may have not said the name Dylan Rounds within that comment. So it's kind of hard to interpret at times. Okay, Robert. But um, yeah, if it's pivot parts, what, to fix the leak? You know, just quick question, if anyone can answer it. When it comes to the pivots out there, you know, with, with it leaking, it's fighting a losing battle, and you've got to constantly maintain it. Is it possible to have like a pivot, the main line, for it to last and not constantly break down? Or, or are you just always fighting a losing battle? Is there any way to get a really long-lasting, high-quality one or not? I'm sure it would cost more then. Weezer also says... I don't understand time-lapse videos. Don't they take a video and condense it? Yes, that's correct, Weezer. Is it possible it recorded the whole time and the FBI was able to get the whole video instead of a short clip? I don't know, but technology is amazing these days. Can anyone tell me if this is a possibility that would explain the conflict in stories? It may have taken them months to get the full video. Does anyone understand what I'm trying to say or the way... Okay. I'm in mourning for your tomatoes. Oh yeah, um, I guess Weezer's tomatoes went a bit soggy, submerged in the water, and not doing too well. But with the Warlight Ref members only towel, it'll, it'll dry them off and shy them up at the same time. I mean, Badger Life hasn't been complaining recently, okay? So the, the tomatoes must be okay still, okay? Weezer saying... Thank you, the weather just isn't cooperating this year. I'll try again next year. It's going to be a very short summer here. Uh, best way to understand a time-lapse described by Indiana is to put time-lapse video into YouTube so you actually see how they work. Basically, it's not a video that runs at real time, but a video of every five minutes or so, depending how the phone video is set to. Then all the clips join together to give one video, so condensed, just as you say, but a real-time video that is just speeded up. Hope that helps. Right. Last year was a bad year for tomatoes for us. We planted 80 and we've lost four or five. Okay. Right. So if I had to describe it myself from what I've seen, on YouTube, people have done like from age one to age 30 years of age and they've basically taken a photo of themselves every single day or once a month for several years and then put all those photos into order and turn it into a video that way and sped it up as well. So it kind of like flicks through, almost like a video. You cut stop motion, I don't know, more of a slideshow, but turn into a video. And because it's sped up, it's got a bit of a smoother flow, right? And that's kind of like a, a time lapse in a way. I can't remember the specific wording, but it's kind of like time lapse. Um, when I've done time-lapse videos, actual videos, it's known as hyperlapse on iPhone, but on Android, it's just called time-lapse, but it does the same exact thing from what I've experienced and tested myself. I do have time-lapse videos on my YouTube channel of the sky and clouds. If you want to check that out, feel free. Basically, the setup format is I'd put the phone down, point it at whatever, hit the record button and walk away, okay? The slower the movement of whatever, the more effective and better outcome you get, okay? If you're recording something already fast, it's going to be even faster by the time it's processed and done its thing, okay? So time-lapse, hyperlapse, same thing, Video-based works best, best results when looking at a slow process of something, whether it be clouds moving in the sky or, to a greater degree, a plant growing or a tomato growing on a plant, you know, that type of stuff. What about the length of it, right? That's what we are trying to figure out, because like with the Dylan Rounds case, the talk of 
um, the time-lapse video being two hours long, if not longer. Yet Candice Cooley has said, and the news articles and court document have stated a 27-second clip. Well, actually, no. All that has stated a 7.27 a.m. timestamp, but it was Candice Cooley only, I believe, to say it was 27 seconds long. Okay? So... When I've done my time lapse and I've set it up looking at the sky, I've left it for five hours recording. Five hours of recording. I come back to the phone, I stop the record button, um, and then in a matter of minutes, it's like processed and it's gone from five minutes to three to four minutes video. That's what it does. It can like condenses it because it speeds it up so it's a shorter length of time the video is at okay but the longer you record for and the slower whatever you're recording the smoother and better the result overall you see the transition better okay i mean kind of like these time-lapse videos are kind of like if you had a sketchbook or a notepad and you drew like a stick figure on one page then on the next page, you drew him again, but moving slightly and repeated it. And that slight little adjustment to the movement of the stick figure, once you've completed that notebook and then you flick through the pages, it actually looks like an animation, stop motion, okay? And that's kind of like a timestamp in a way. Yeah, it's taken time to do and all that, the process of time. Time being, it takes longer than the final product, okay? So in the Dylan Round situation, I could understand why people would be saying that the video, because it says timestamp of a time-lapse video recording on Dylan's phone could be up to two hours, if not longer, right? You just have to ask yourself at what point was that recording started, right? The moment Dylan Rounds woke up in the morning then went down to the grain shed and then was killed, but that's like a total of 30, 40 minutes. That's not two hours long. So you'd think that it must incorporate after Dylan's death and up to a certain time then. Hmm. Anything else? No. Move on, we've got Indiana. Weird comment to say from Ellie. The bag of bones were mostly animal, mostly. So what was the rest of the bones? So it was kind of weirded like that. Um, it was like... All bones, or most of the bones, were animal, but the odd one just wasn't identified as animal or human. Why was it not identified? I personally don't know. It's a bone at the end of the day. Why can't they identify it? That's a bit strange. If it was a human bone, it would seem a bit weird. Why have one human bone mixed up with a load of animal bones? Probably to conceal it better, maybe. But... You think about the, the amount of bones in a human body for what every one little bone or for every one bone is put into a bag of about 10 animal bones. It seems very, I don't know, impractical and time consuming, right? I don't think Brenner would be that focused on doing it that way in disposal and leaving it on, the, on the, just in the open underneath a bush. Seems a bit odd, in my opinion. Aggravated murder and first-degree murder are the same. Uh-huh. Robert saying, This happened in the second or third week after Dylan went missing. I reported several times about FedEx attempting to deliver a package to the Independence Valley gate. So basically, was this delivered package ordered before Dylan went missing and killed and came a bit too late? Okay. Not that it's the case, but... I'm just trying to piece different things together and I'm probably wrong, okay? I'm probably wrong, but if I didn't know what was what, you know, this is just like um, a scenario and that's all. At some point, I could have been thinking, oh, this delivery made to Dylan, maybe pivot parts possibly, dropping off near the grain shed. Has it got anything to do with the 28th of May, 2022 when that blue, I think it was a bluish truck, jewelly truck was seen leaving the property of the grain shed 
at around 3 p.m. and Walt and Michelle saw it, could that have been attempting to make a delivery drop off for what Dylan ordered? Anyone agree with that or not at all? Because it says FedEx here, so you thought a FedEx van would come on down. But sometimes you get these unmarked cars delivering packages um, in other countries, so you never know. Okay. Crafts and crime. I looked up how long a two-hour time-lapse video was. This is what Google says, so actually they are both right, Bob and Justin. If you want a time-lapse video that runs at 30 frames per second with a duration of 30 seconds, setting a shooting interval of 8 seconds will give you an event duration of 2 hours. Okay. I mean, I said, when I did mine, it was about 5 hours long and the length of the video was about 2 to 3 minutes long by the end of it once it did its processing and everything. Okay. What's this one? Nikki, shout out to Nikki, new viewer. Um, looks like they got a profile picture of a cat, so I think that's interesting. Basically saying that Betty Hayward remains free. You are too good for this BS. And then two kisses at the end. Just Jen popping back in saying, if Dylan seen him driving up, felt threatened, so he pushed record, that's awesome. But it's getting less likely they find Dylan. I'm starting to lose hope. I would have made a deal rather than my child lay in the desert for this long. Fair enough. Um, I don't know if Candice Cooley, Justin Rounds will change their mindsets with making a deal with Brenner. Maybe if it gets to such a point where it feels like there's no hope to them and they've lost the confidence, they might. But then again, it depends if Brenner is willing to open up at a later point or if he's going to be a bit awkward. You know, he, he offered in the past and maybe things have changed. Maybe... He doesn't like being rejected, right? Office turned down back then. Might take that into mind down the line. Um, the bit what Just Jen says, saying that Dylan could have pushed a record button when feeling threatened in the presence of Brenner. All I would say is, okay, if you think back, if the likes of Ed Harshberger, Barger, or Ed Harsh Arger, however you say his name, had maybe the odd run-in in the past, okay, with Dylan rounds, like a falling out, an argument, or even when Dylan had a bit of an argument with uh, Don Hatley, did Dylan ever pull out the phone then during time of conflict? Does anyone know, like anyone in the background watching right now who may have seen Dylan in the past in real life, can you remember, report on seeing Dylan pulling out his phone, recording uh, a time where he may have felt threatened or he was in a confrontation with someone or a fight. If he pulled out his phone back then to document something, then okay, okay, maybe that could apply in uh, the situation with Brenner on the 28th, right? But if he didn't, then I just can't imagine it in general, okay? Maybe other people do, right? You think about it, there's a lot of people who pull out the phones when there's a fight, pull out a phone when someone's about to jump off the bridge, you know, people are like that, especially like in the UK and elsewhere too. So I, I just don't think Dylan would be the type of individual to do that. I mean, if you're going to defend yourself pulling out a phone, right? I can understand it's to record it, to document it. Like if you do anything bad to me, this is all on record. But sometimes that can actually encourage the potential threat to strike and take you out, right? Because if you may have said the odd thing, uh, made a little slip up, and it's already been documented and recorded, you kind of screwed. So you're probably going to lash out and silence that individual. So by pulling out the phone, it's less of a form of defence and more of an um, aggravating thing which can trigger the other person to push on and do something, right? Whereas... In, in some circumstances, if you, ha if you were armed firearm and you felt threatened and then you pulled it out, a bit more chance that the other person could back down. Not always, but more likely. Okay, that's just my thoughts. Jacqueline Rampley, I wish Betty Hayward nothing but goodness and light. It's awful hearing that she's been going through that stuff. Fed up 
with racism, okay? Saying you can't explain it because you don't know what's going on. I thought you got out of don't know what you're talking about business. I mean, you've failed to escape the slums of a default profile. It's still a default profile. Okay? Boring. People don't watch your videos because you're not good at it. Learn about what you're talking about before you talk. I mean, once again, 3.5 million views in total, over 200,000 hours of watch time. Clearly, I must know what I'm talking about for people to have their retained and attained attention at one screen and display, okay? I mean, statistically speaking, uh, I mean, do you even have stats? No, dead-end channel, waste of time. Um. Just refer back to Jacqueline quickly. Shout out to Jacqueline because in recent times she's been catching up with past videos like Kenny Veach and stuff. And you know, that's a good example okay, of an individual, Jacqueline, looking back at the past. And I know other people do as well. There'll be some out there. And maybe more so others do it, but just in general on a case or topic. But what Jacqueline does is look back at past videos of mine to catch up on stuff and to understand why things were worded how they are back then and where it translates to now, you know. Other people over time fail to do that because they'll come on in and listen to a video now without the context of back then and then they'll complain, you know. But if people did what Jacqueline did, looking back at older videos and seeing stuff maybe they've never seen before, it can help them understand and learn about things so just wanted to throw that in looks like we've reached the end of the comments i think it's now time to move on so here we are on the maps as you can see um there's a lot of markers a lot of named locations but we can get to the bottom of it basically what we're looking at is all known located reservoirs within their respectful locations mainly lucin area of utah and montello nevada okay um, the main spot where it's Don Hatley's main fishing favourite spot is in Idaho, in between Twin Falls and Burley, and closer to Hazleton, Idaho, okay? And that was passed on by what Robert Berger has said. So we can look at them individually, up close, get an idea of what they look like visually, and come to maybe a conclusion, or you yourself throughout the chat of this video can let me know if there's a certain spot which is more likely for Don Hatley and Brenner to be at, okay? I used a blue marker just so it stands out clearer. The red markers you don't need to focus on today. I used like a, a spoon and knife just to resemble fishing, eating afterwards, okay? Just so it's a bit more memorable. I mean, maybe we can just acknowledge the one spot, okay? Montello. What was previously stated in the past on the 29th, Jim Brenner, Don Hatley being at Cowboy Bar, but it was debunked by Taylina, who said they weren't there at the time. Uh, you know, in a way, I didn't really expect them to be, just because I didn't think Brenner would come back to this area, if he's welcomed or not, if people dislike him. Partially why he went to Lucin to move away from people, so he wasn't causing any trouble after that 2021 aggravated assault on a 69-year-old, you thought maybe part ways it's for the best and closer to your friend Don Hatley, okay? So, uh, yeah, is there any, I don't know, proof evidence which people can back up to reinforce that this event happened on the 29th? Feel free to do so, right? But I said, I just feel that the 29th is an important date as it's the day after Dylan's death and desecration, but it's the day before the family got concerned and came on down and said to the police and search and rescue. It's kind of like a grey patch. Okay, we've heard about the days after that, so like the 30th of May, parents coming on down, checking on Dylan at the farm, breaking into his truck back window to look for clues. Then on the 31st of May 2022, you got Kurt Wadsworth hearing from the psychic about Dylan being held hostage in Montello by Viles Venstra, Kurt contacting the parents and police about it, turns out to be a false lead. Then you got the 1st and 2nd of June following, which the Gun and Keith up were returned back on one day after another, as well as June 2nd being the spring cleaning. 
Then June 4th, June 5th is when you had like the Heavy D crew coming on down and doing the flyby over, as well as on the 5th, some helicopter flying through the area, a different person of the wash and capturing those track marks, which Candice Cooley posted on Facebook at the time. Okay, so there's been a couple of things going on, right? But what about the 29th, looking back? After this happened, but before the other thing occurred, which was the family coming on down, just to see where people were at the, the time and what they were talking about. You know, previously we looked at the, the 28th, the barbecue, you know, later on in the day after Brenner did what he did to Dylan, you know, what were the conversations like? What did they talk about? Yeah, it's a bit weird, you know, did Brenner confess there and then to Don Hatley about what happened? Or were they both in on it together from the start and just simply getting food, distracting themselves and then talking through what they were going to do next and maybe dispose of Dylan to a different place, right? That's possibilities. So does that translate over to the day after the 29th? More confessions or more talking or is it more of an alibi to get away from the area so they appear less suspicious to distract themselves and do other things maybe i guess it depends how you look at it right but yeah so we do have a different location to look at i did you know manually check to see if there was like photos up close at the areas but there weren't except maybe the odd one so um just wanted to let you know in case you wondered why we're not going right into these areas or looking at photos, just because they don't really seem to exist, right? But I think what we should do first to begin everything off is look at the the most favorited place supposedly by Don Hartley, where he could have taken Brenner on the 29th, and that's up here in Idaho. Now we can do a quick distance check, I guess. If we just press there work our way down. Now, to be honest, you probably could follow it in a specific order, to be honest. Move that down here. Because you've got Grouse Creek, haven't you? Something like that. There. This is about like 105, 104 miles from near the... It's rough, roughly speaking near the Grain Shed property, uh, where the likes of Brenner was at least. And all that Grouse Creek up that way, and eventually getting into Idaho and the city and to the uh, reservoir. Okay, so is doable that distance, manageable, true. Get rid of that. Zoom in on the area, as you can see, you see the water there. Okay, you can look at up close. Okay, just give me a second. Here we are. As well, whilst we're looking about, be sure to let me know if you notice any cameras within the area, any CCTV. Bit of a crossroad here. Oh, wow. Well, we've got poles. We've got poles. Look how long those poles are. What, you're crazy? Are you impressed by this? I'm sure these will do. Okay, maybe the poles from the shack lady weren't given out, but at least we've got the uh, remainders here. Good polls, polls, poll time. Betty Haywards Hay provided as well. Haywards Hay from her farm. What does this say here? Jim Johnson Memorial Park. So a park which coincides with fishing as well as, uh, I guess, like maybe a trailer park. You got like a, a white RV over there parked up. Very quiet at this point. No dumping allowed. Campfires in designated pits. Okay. Could there be any trail cams in the area, possibly? Just let me know if you notice anything odd or... It's just because... Oh, there is someone over there parked up. So maybe there are alternative ways. Interesting. Maybe they could have driven down there where it's a bit more out of sight and hidden in the trees if they're keeping a low profile. Never thought about that. That's a possibility, right? I mm. guess it just depends if it was busy or not on the day. I mean, if they came down here, because this is what we've got to acknowledge, this supposed fishing trip, if it really did happen, you know, was it a simple activity of let's go fishing and have some fun and maybe distract ourselves because of what's happened if there was any confessions taking place um, prior? If not that, could it have been used as code word 
Let's go fishing as like an alibi, but actually we're going down to an area to dispose of Dylan rounds or some kind of evidence. You know, if Dylan's phone was found in Lucin Pond, submerged in water, you know, what's stopping them from doing it again with other items, but elsewhere further afar? Could be hard to reach, and that's why they do what they do. You never know, right? Makes you think. So somewhere down there could have buried something in the ground, within the trees, bushy area, or did they just chuck something into the water itself? You never know. These are just ideas, theories. Let me know if you agree or not. Of course, if there was CCTV footage, that would be most helpful because then it can reinforce or debunk whether or not they were there at that moment, on that day, that date, that year, right? I mean, I think one thing we've got to acknowledge is it seems like more effort, focus and time has been put into Chase Venstra on his whereabouts on the 28th compared to the likes of Brenner, um, Don Hatley, maybe Kurt Wadsworth, uh, Ed Harshbarger, you know, like kind of collectively. More focus, more suspicion and questioning has been put towards Chase Venstra than all the other people, right? And it's been described that Chase Venstra was never a part of the investigation in the first place, yet he received the most attention and focus. Does make you think, right? All that CCTV footage from the Flying Jays, Snowville, and then Ogden, and then Clinton, all within the same day of the 28th. Yeah, no CCTV of Brenner or Don Hatley going fishing, or after spring cleaning June 2nd, 2022, going down to Wendover, described by Candice Cooley to possibly dispose of the trash bags, which could have been evidence from the grain shed linked with Dylan. Yet no focus was done there. No follow-up on CCTV to see where they disposed that stuff of. That's not good, right? Uh, I think Fast Eddie and some of us talking about the Aiden Clune case on the highway, that there was no CCTV footage retrieved there to suggest what Aiden was doing or where he was exactly going, right, on how he was behaving. Yeah, there's cameras on the highway, like the highway patrol, yeah. They weren't, you know, used or no footage retrieved from them. So why is that lacking when CCTV is quite important in different cases? True crime, crime, missing people, the lot, okay? It documents what happened and it gives a timestamp too. Anyway, let's just move on down here. We've got like, um, I don't know what that is, a pipe in the ground. Some water as well. Is it for washing stuff? A few rocks. Oh, we've got more poles. We've got more poles. Watch your crazy. Is this going to be a, a pole night or something? Um, We've got a weird sign here in the ground saying donations are accepted here. Oh, come on, Miss T. I know you've set up all those other donation pages, but I think you're getting a little bit desperate and greedy now, putting signs out in general public so more people can give to you. My question is, Miss T, what does that symbol mean? There's a handout, and what are you receiving? Are those nuts? Does Miss T want nuts to be donated into her hand? Or are they like lips? Like kisses are donated? Or is it like leaves? Donate leaves and vegetation. It's hard to tell what it actually means, but with it being in front of that bush, it could actually explain what's going on. I think what happens is you go up to this sign, then you walk up to this bush like an ATM and you make a transaction, okay? You put your hand in with whatever you've got to offer and then Miss T's hand will pop out and grab you and pull you in or pull whatever in and then the donation has been accepted. That's interesting, Miss T. You're thinking outside of the box. Okay, I don't know how long it will last for, but interesting. Anyway, as you see here, if it's not down there uh, within the bushes and vegetation, and if it's not further afar, much down there where you can see like some kind of vehicle parked up, you do have like this open public area, like where that truck's parked and some of the others. You got those bays there, little allocated spots where I guess you could go fishing, right? Yeah. Just makes you think it's weird, like imagining the possibilities that if on the 29th of May 2022 and Brenner and Don Hatley are somewhere down here, you know, how they were able just to get on with it despite what's happened the day before, whether Don Hatley knew or not, okay, or started to find out about it with Brenner 
tagging along, possibly, possibly, um, just getting on. But then again, Justin Rounds did say when he confronted Breno about the stuff, he acted cool and calm like he had no part at the time. So it's just the way he is, I guess. But there's enough space, right? It'd be interesting if there was any witnesses present at the time to say if they saw two big guys with beards in the area or not. Got some sign there. Got a good view as well in the distance. Yeah. I guess that's where you can maybe park trailers in the distance over that way. Got these like little buildings as well. We put the trash. I think it was Tasha that said she was going to dump me in a trash bin. Come on, Tash. Tasha, trasher. You try. What I do find kind of ironic here. It looks like we found Ron Tello's home or one of his secondary homes. See, this is the thing. The first time gave Ron Tello his 15 minutes of fame in Montello. It was the one time he wasn't present in the chat. What a shame. But here we go. We got his other secret shack or room, whatever. Door looks a bit knackered, um, but at least it's still standing. Oh, no. Not again. We got more poles. What is it with all these poles? How many more are they? Wow, they're all raining in. These poles, it's like it's like um, the, the Blessing Super Chat train. Poles by the second. Interesting. Let's say absolutely no firewood dumps or nails. Okay. Is that it of the area? Okay, okay, okay. So that's what it looks like. Quite vast, quite open. Do we have any photos, maybe? Oh, we got some here. One of 20. Mm. Maybe not the best quality. I'm just thinking, like, if people are swimming in the water, I don't want to come across any inappropriate photos. So what we'll do instead... So it's not messy. Let's just go down here to uh, which looks like it's in the water. What do we have here? Oh. Oh. That doesn't look good. What's going on here? Oh, wow. There's some big fish. And you can see that they're not alive. Let's get rid of that tab. No, what the hell's going on here? All washed up on the shoreline. Is that because the water has, I don't know, gone down in levels and the fish got stuck on the side and, like, suffocated or whatever you call it? I don't know. That sounds a bit rough. You can see the uh, track marks as well on the ground where it looks like they've gone into the water so far. I don't know why, unless it's reversing back to put the boat into the water, maybe. Yeah, Wow. Let's just get a bit closer to the um, the mound, if you call it that. Yeah, wow. Follows all the way down there. And what do we have here? What is that sticking out the ground? Are they pipes? Is that sewage? Can anyone explain? Drains? Drainage? I mean, if stuff comes out of that, does that contaminate the water? And then that's what's caused the fish to die. I don't know. Doesn't look too good, to be honest. Mm. I mean, it's, it's quite vast, this area, this reservoir. But, you know, at, at least this confirms that there are fishes or was fishes in the water. So, you know, a place where Don Hatley could go, has gone in the past and... Decided to get Brenner to tag along this time on the 29th to get away from the crime scene, if you want to call it that. Just take a look at this other one. What do we have here? Ooh, we're lower down on the ground. Oh my. There's some big fish. If anyone knows the type of fish, feel free to explain in the chat. Look at that. Wait, what's happened to its eyes? Oh, is that birds? Birds pecking at it, probably. Oh, wow, that's massive. Ooh, what's going on there, though? It just looks a bit weird coloured. It actually looks like its scales have come off. Have birds been pecking at it? That's all I could think of. The other ones have got scales on, but that one hasn't. 
That one hasn't either, unless it's broken away. Oh, 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 wow. I think we're actually within the water because something's gone on. That's massive. Does anyone know what type of fish that is? It's kind of glitched out, hasn't it, within the water, but you can see that it follows all the way down. People have gathered as well. And some of those fish are a bit like floating in the water as well. I mean, do we have any more over here? Maybe we do. Hold on. Um, yeah, we do, look. There's another fish. And then another one. And these are like within the water. So it's not like washed up on the shoreline. And there's like a, a couple more over there. So I don't know what's happened um, at the time. Fish dying. Quality of the water. Contamination. Must be something like that, right? Was it a certain event which happened? Was it recorded? I mean, these have definitely been washed up. Well, what's that? Wait, what does that say? Um, I don't know what that says. Whoa, why is it glitched? Oh my. Headlight lens restorer. What does that mean? Weird what can wash up on the side, right? Can't see any phones or anything. But there's a fair few fish and that's a that's a pretty big fish, right? So maybe that's a place that Don Hatley likes. You know, you get good quality fish, maybe, at the time when they're not dead. And then takes them back to his trailer and then they start eating them. You think, how can... Well, it depends who Don Hatley knew at the time, but how can Brenner have the stomach to eat food and to go on like normal after what he supposedly done to Dylan the day before, right? Kind of makes you think. Yeah. And then you've got these like little black knobs on the side. Quite a few knobs which you'd attach rope around if you're docking nearby in a, a boat or a small little paddle boat or something. Yeah, fair enough. Is that person proposing? No, they're just on the knees with a camera. Oh, okay. They must be they must have come down to take photos of all the dead fish, probably. Most likely taken by them. Fair enough. I don't know why it happened. We got one more little spot here. What's going on? Uh, so it's just the same people again, just looking around the area, quiet, nothing to see here. We got behind the bush, I think I could... Uh, Miss T, I can see your arms sticking out. Get out the bush, we know you're there, okay? you caught red-handed, hence why you've got red hands at times when uh, during some of my videos, right? Yeah, is that a blue bar, a pull-up bar? No, it's a bit too high. Is that a camera? No, it's more of a telegraph pole, something else. It looks more like a, an alarm or bell. As I said, um, I've, personally, I've not seen any cameras within the area, okay? If there was, then maybe you could tie it in. As, like, proof to say about the word down here. Okay, so you got that there. We've looked at the distance. This is supposedly the, the main favourite spot where they could have gone down, Okay. What we'll just do now is look at the alternative locations, which are closer to where they live, okay? We'll start from the bottom, work our way up on the left-hand side. So hopefully it processes and everything. Down here, which is on the, the Montello, Nevada side, or near to Montello, I should say, is Stockland Reservoir, okay? I don't know where... Ah, there it is. There's the official name. Stockland Reservoir within this area. I'd say it looks pretty dried up in this specific spot, okay? Uh, maybe it's the timing, uh, summertime, whatever. This is 2019 imagery, just in case you're wondering. What I would say is, I guess one thing that would be very determined as to where someone like Hately uh, Brenner would go to would be, you know, it's summertime, at the time, May, summertime, it's warm, some areas are dried up, ponds have dried up, washes haven't got any water in them. So you'd be going to a reservoir where there's still a decent amount of water and healthy conditions for fishers if you're going fishing, right? That could determine the direction they go in. And a place like this doesn't seem like an area they would go to.
personally. It is near Pilot Peak, though, just as a little reference point. And down south, over that way, you can see West Wendover, which is down there. Now, the reason why I pointed that out is if you've got a reservoir around this area here where fish could be, let's just say, maybe not every reservoir has fishes. I don't know. I'm not an expert, okay? I'm not Poseidon. I'm not an expert. And if you can clear it up, feel free to do so. But because it's kind of on the way down to Wendover, although it's on the other side and not on the loose side, Utah, which you could contest as it not being likely, but if Candice Cooley said that Brenner and Haightley went down to, or Hatley went down to Wendover after the spring cleaning June 2nd, maybe they passed by one of the reservoirs or ponds, lakes to dispose of Dylan or those trash bags of other evidence. You never know, right? It was never followed up, unfortunately, so it's more of a guessing game, but you can't help but think, right? Now, yes, we are looking at the 29th, which is days before the spring cleaning, but they could have scouted it out, you never know. May have passed somewhere and thought, hey, this looks like the type of spot where we could get rid of something besides the whole fishing idea. You know, fishing could be a code name for disposing of evidence. You never know, right? And if not that, it could have just been used as an alibi to say, oh, we weren't in the area, we were over here. Now, if it was an alibi, clearly it didn't really work out for Brenner, right? Don Hatley, though, walking free, but possible witness, you know. As we've seen, if you think about it, okay, 28th, you've got the barbecue with Brenner, Don Hatley at their place. Don's place, I mean, eating, talking, hanging out. Hours after, Dylan being taken out, killed. Makes you think what conversations took place there. Then 29th, possibly them two hanging out once again. Let's say fishing, doing that activity. What were they talking about then? Then you got after spring cleaning, June 2nd, after that. Them going both down to Wendover. What were they doing there? What were they talking about? You see, over the course of time, it seems like they spent quite a bit of time together after Dylan's death. And is that because they're guilty? Is it because they're getting their stories straight, trying to reason things? Um... And they make themselves look busy and uh, distract themselves so they don't break down or confess, whatever. I don't know at the time, but it makes you think. And even if Don Hatley was innocent, if he spent more time with Brenner around that time frame, did Brenner ever once open up and confess or say, I need some help with, you know, what I've done? It make you think. Any way to know would be to directly ask Don Hartley, but where he's at and how Justin thinks about him, I don't know if things have gone a bit like retracted, gone a bit quiet, withdrawn. You never know. Maybe you'd hear it in the court down the line, but it's not coming anytime soon because they've not really got on with the court proceedings and stuff truly yet. But anyway, reservoir here. Maybe if we work our way up, um, maybe not. It does look dry, but never mind. Across. Um, on the other side of Tono Range HP, we've got Luray Reservoir down here, as you can see. Okay, that's what it looks like. Up near the mountain area. When looking here, uh, if I just zoom on in, it looks more like um, this bit here. It actually looks more like a wash, the way it like winds in and out like a snake. Now. If it's called Luray Reservoir, does that link tie on to Luray Wash, which is more north, nearer to Montello? It does make me question. Let me know if uh, you have the answer. Once again, it does look dried up, right? If it's dried up, probably not a spot where you'd be going fishing. And if, if you were, they'd probably be dead. Though, further up this way, because of the colour of it, I don't know, it makes me think, is this where the water is at, the true reservoir? Because it... It's got the same colour resemblance as some of the ponds in Lucindy, okay? It's not just pure black dark water or pure blue water. It's kind of murky and mucky, right? Is this mucky water? Even, well, that's if it is water. I don't know, it's just the layout of it looks more likely. I could be wrong. I mean, look at the, uh, what, the Great Salt Lakes, how that can be, the lakes can be filled with water, but then other times... Quite often, it can be pure dryness and salt everywhere. Yeah. So, Luray Reservoir. Take a mind, I'm not going to spend too long looking at these areas because I know we've got a couple to get through. 
So apologies about that. But I appreciate people's patience, okay? And I said, as we do go through each location, feel free to point out if there's any ones that stand out to you. Okay, so we've looked at those two. Work our way up. We might speed up a little bit. We've got Critterden Reservoir and 21, 22, 23 mile. Okay. Hopefully it loads. Let me just sit down for this. So I get a bit more comfortable. There we go. I'll just try and flip the image if that's possible. It does look like there is water here. You can tell by the colour of it, right? A bit of a greeny colour. Near the shoreline as well. Yeah, the mountains. Ah, that one, yeah, you can definitely see the water there, can't you? See, that one stands out more. This is the thing, sometimes named markers and named locations aren't always in the exact spot as to where you'll find the stuff. Bit problematic, right? 23 mile reservoir and 21 mile reservoir. They're kind of like near to one another, right? You got division. Canyon, which looks like um, some kind of wash. That does look like a wash, to be honest. So it works its way downstream and then disperses, kind of. And we're going downhill, it probably collects at the bottom here in the reservoir, as you can see. Are there fish in there? Uh, I don't know, personally, but if they are, maybe this could be a spot they went to as an alternative. All we can do is just look at each spot. Kind of like what we did with Lucin and Montello as for places of interest. Getting through them at the time was a bit of a pain. It was about 35 different locations to get through. It was almost like dot to dot on the maps. It was a bit congested. Not as bad this time. If you are interested in other places of interest at the time, what we looked at, feel free to go back on my channel, look at my past videos, okay? But you probably could park up on the side or try and get as close as possible and then, yeah. Some interesting image quality, do you know, in this area, what we're looking at. Because I've never really focused in here. Right, it's surrounded by these mountains. And what's that there? Is that a pipe? What is that? It's not exactly 3D. It looks like a pipe which is going into the side of that mountain. And the water, I guess, coming out and then collecting here. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. And also, if we rotate it, it looks like there is a dirt road on top, right? I guess there'll be times where maybe heavy rainfall, it could overflow and drop off down here. Hence why there's like pools which are, are filled. You see, 20... 23 mile reservoir. Interesting. Mm, so the force of that water dropping down here could happen. It says Thousand Springs Creek. Now, probably a different name, but I'm sure I've read that in Lucent, Utah. A thousand cring, uh, cring. <laughs> a thousand springs reservoir. Or no, a thousand springs wash. You remember that in Lucent when we're looking there? It's an actual dirt road as well, which goes up to this area, probably for maintenance, you know, if you've got a see to things, I get it. You know, maybe some reservoirs are out of reach or some could be private, restricted, you never know. You could narrow it down. If, if people do have knowledge of which ones you can go to and which ones you can't, you know. Hmm, okay. So there's that one, two, two and two together, basically, close to one another, linked on. I guess, with the water flow. I just face that way. Um, and then we go to Critterden Res. Okay, so the water here is a lot darker, but probably a bit more cleaner, possibly. Uh, you got that overhang once again here, which you would expect to see. Whereas said, um, I don't know if it exactly applies, but what about 2017 in Montello, Nevada, Luray Wash and how things the, the walls broke down, all the water came gushing out, okay? Gushing more than Linda Cushing. Okay, interesting. So near this reservoir, this one here, Critterdan, you do actually have like a designated parking spot here and you got numerous RV trailers, as you can see. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe ten, possibly. Now, are these people camping in the area? Or are these like regulars, people that live nearby? Because as we've seen within the desert area, you get people squatting here, there, everywhere, people just propping up in a trailer in the desert. You never know. You never know. It could just people be camping and hiking out. Are they here for fishing? Maybe, maybe not. But to know that uh, like humans inhabit it at some point in time, it highlights possibilities that it's it's for public, you know, to be able to explore and go on. I know people say about the BLM, public land and all that, the, the rights and laws there. I'm not an expert, okay? I might not know what's what, but I can at least point things out and then you can share your thoughts to it, okay? There's been a possible spot. Um quite rich the water very dark it actually looks a bit spooky to be honest when you look at it it looks like the abyss it looks like you've used to gaze into watch of crazy's back pocket i don't know never to see the day of light ever again wow watch your crazy your back pocket runs very deep wow anyway let's zoom on out Oh, we got some more trailers parked on the side, and we got like some little boats as well. Okay. A red truck parked there by the side, followed by a few more. So it seems to be a bit of a popular spot, this. Now, would Don Hatley and Brenner prefer to go here if it's a hot spot? Maybe not. Want to be out, out of the way, away from people, where it's quiet, peaceful. If they were to do anything dodgy, suspicious, obviously they want to be out of sight and just. Try and get it so there's no one around. A few more vehicles parked really close to the uh, shoreline, the water. I don't know what that weird vegetation stuff is in the water. It looks a bit of a sea creature. <laughs> Some boats as well. Of course, um, any of you watching right now, if you notice any of these reservoirs and you've visited them, feel free to share your experiences in the chat or comments. How did it go? What was it like? Anything dodgy? Was it good? You know, just experiences like that. Seems to branch off here. It's called Critterden Springs. Can you see it goes in and out like a snake? That's interesting, that. Yeah, very greeny as well. What's that back here? Like a, a house or a farm. That looks like a house, that, to be honest. Long Canyon, up that way. Granite Creek. So quite vast, this area, and rich, the water. Okay. So if we look there... Um, Ah, okay. Granite Creek Res. So, okay. I think this all ties on with one another, to be honest. Well, this one's classed as the reservoir, and look how small that is and dried up. That doesn't look too good, does it? Hmm. So, down that way, you got Critterden Reservoir. It all follows in the same direction, right? And maybe the, the flow of water, if it ever did overflow. But here, this, it almost looks like a pond, to be honest, because it, it, it does look dry. Yeah, it is. As dry as those bottles of wine Bellevue has consumed. What else do we have? And then a bit further up north, we've got Granite Creek Reservoir. Once again, I, I don't see where the water is unless it's on the side of, like, where you see the road. Hard to tell. I don't know if that green stuff is where the reservoir is, where the water is. Hmm. Got a few mounds, right? And strange colours. Okay. So we had that one. Make sure we're facing north, I believe. Yep. Okay. Done that one, done that one, done the ones down here. We get closer to the, um, I think we're, are we going into Lucin yet? Oh yeah, we're transitioning into Lucin now. We've got Death Creek Reservoir in Lucin. 
near to Burnt Mountain. I'm going to be burning some chicken nuggets. Okay, so where that green stuff is, I don't know what that means, to be honest. Hmm. But you can clearly see the water, you can even see the shimmer of it. So it must have been a sunny day at the time as it reflects off the water. Dark water too. Decent amount, as you can see. Do we have any people parked up on the side? Or boats? Not from what I can see. If it's a quieter spot, then maybe, hey, this is a place you would go. Maybe you could say it's a bit, um, bit of a coincidence or a bit dodgy being called Death Creek Reservoir. You know, Death. Mm. But yeah, um, fish could be here, fishing trip, possibly. Mm. You see there's a Nevada side going on that way. You've got Death Valley and Death Creek. Do you know where it says Death Valley? Is that the Death Valley or a different Death Valley? I don't know. It doesn't look like it's in the right area. Could be an alternative. But it works its way down, as you can see, down here and collects in this area. So you get the idea, direction of the water flow, right? And we don't really see any vehicles. There's like something white under the tree. That could be a boat. Okay. Good quality. Good image quality, to be honest. Okay, so we've done that one. Then not far, we've actually got Etna Reservoir. And this is like near Grouse Creek. Or oh, it's already up Grouse Creek past the farms further down south. You see here near Morse Canyon. Some kind of building structure there. Looks abandoned. Interesting. Another structure there with some kind of like fence around it. Hmm. Interesting. Bit of trees, vegetation, and then here is the, the reservoir. I'm just looking around the outer skirt. We're looking around the rim. Does the rim hold anything of interest, intrigue? Don't really see any trailers or visitors. I don't know what that is there. Pipe or gate. Okay, so at least at this time it's quiet, but you just fish here. Could be an alternative, right? Some weird dots in the water. So the rim is empty. Nothing to see. Within the water, you can't see any activity. Take a mind, I'm not looking for activity of if Brenner or Hatley was caught on camera here, but... Just seeing if, if there's like a populated busy area, it's probably less likely for them to visit because, you know, they're living in a quiet area where the population is almost zero, almost, or close to. You don't think they're going to go to a really busy place to then do their activities because it'll probably annoy them. You know, you take in mind Brenner said in the past, well, Kenny's clearly reiterated saying that Brenner wanted the police search and rescue family away from the Grain Shed property because it was aggravating him. He didn't like many people being around him. And around the time of when Dylan was taken out, it's probably heightened and tense in a way. Hence why he wanted to be left alone. So if Brenner was to do anything with the likes of Don Hatley a few days before the 29th, the day after Dylan's been killed, most likely it would be, let's go to a place where it's quiet, away from everyone, so I can just think, cool off, whatever. Now, it might sound a bit silly that, to be honest, because if Brenner's already living in a quiet place, away from everyone, then do you really need to go to another place where it's even quieter. Well, I don't know. Preference, distraction, different activity in between. Yeah, so we got that one, Etna Res. And it has been talked about Grouse Creek, okay? I can't remember who worded it now, whether it was the shack lady or somebody else saying that around Grouse Creek, you got maybe the odd abandoned building. It might have been Badger or Weezer um highlighting it saying in Grouse Creek you've got like um abandoned cars that Dylan could be hidden in one just possibilities like that theories and ideas um seems to be one of the main routes to getting up to the likes of Idaho Hazelton um what's the other place oh, I forgot I forgot what it's called now but you know we've looked at it already some farm Branches up the area, you see the uh, pivots too. 
So maybe you, you take in mind that places like this, where it be uh, the wash, which is in this area, which travels down into Lucerne or this reservoir here, this could be a bit more private, depending who owns it, if it's nearer to this farming area. Um, and as well, you know, if you, if you can be spotted by the farmers nearby or people living here, you, you're probably not going to go down there to do anything suspicious because you'll be seen. Well, if they simply weren't doing anything suspicious and minding their own business, it would have been interesting to ask any of the farmers, farmhanders, whatever, who are in the area, their account of what they saw and who they saw, right? Just as like a witness report, really. What else do we have? Um... We've got Lynn Reservoir. Okay. There's Lynn. Appears to be near some like farming place, as you see there. And here's it's a bit more busy. Image quality is a little bit better this time. I think it's because I've got the angle correct. You actually got a decent sized house there as well. Hmm. So there's a bit more activity here. You come down here, doesn't seem to be like anyone parking up or hanging out from the looks of it. Near to that too, maybe it's not a good idea to be parking up because if the, the, the farmer's ranches are nearby and you are near the water, you could get like questioned, what are you doing? I don't know. Just let me know, Lynn Rez, is that a possible place, uh, a place of interest? Um, which other ones do we have? Got Warm Spring. So we've got about like four more, I think. Warm Spring, Res, more farmland nearby. You see that like green field. Bit more water there. Is that a, more of a pond area, possibly? Could be. More objects scattered on the floor. And then here's the Res. Shiny water. Though, you know, you look around the edges, it does look a little bit dried up, depending on the time, season. Yeah. How deep are these reservoirs? If anyone knows, that'd be interesting to know. Because, you know, the deeper it is, maybe the more chances and opportunities you have of sinking something to the ground, you know. If you think about it, Dylan's phone dumped in Lucent Pond and it was said about what? Some people went down there before the phone was found and they didn't even pay any attention. I think I think it was worded by, who was it now? Mob Crew Chris, Mob Crew, when he went down there before the phone was found, looking, documenting, recording. He was up near the pond and didn't even notice the phone was in the water, so somewhat concealed. Candice Cooley has said that the Lucent Pond is kind of shallow, but then... I think there was another account where Candice Cooley said it was deep and there was divers used. So, kind of hard to tell, but if Lucent Pond, deep or not, was able to kind of conceal a phone for a certain length of time, then think of what a reservoir is capable of, right? I mean, if, like, Dylan was buried or dumped in a reservoir, would that lead to fishes dying or any signs being telling obvious in the water if anyone was down there fishing. You get what I'm saying? I don't know if there's any complications that could arise from it, okay? What else do we have? We've got Muddy Creek Reservoir. That definitely sounds like the type of place where uh, Watch Her Crazy goes. Muddy Creek, down and dirty, rolling around in the mud. Mud wrestling. Matt Lingo, watch out. But once again, it looks a bit dried up, which is odd. Unless it's just the image quality here. Is it that there? No, I just can't really see any water in this spot. Hmm. Can't really tell. It's near. It's near like some like farm place, as you can see. Yeah. Actually, there's actually someone caught on camera there, I think. That's a first. Hmm. 
Uh, we've got Cliff Res, which is this spot here. Kind of small, to be honest. Okay. And then, finally, we've got Pugsley Res, which is here. This is even smaller. Looks more like a pond, in my opinion, right? And dry around the side, very salty. Oh, you got another area there, too. Okay. Just wanted to share those with you, right, as different alternatives. If it's not this spot, it could be the other, where they went fishing. And take in mind... I'm working with very limited material. I, I did ask in the past or suggest if you've got any ideas, feel free to share, but um, that didn't come about. So, you know, maybe this video will help generate new ideas or a stronger focus in a different direction. Okay. Do we have any other places? I mean, when I, it's weird, when I typed in reservoir, Lucin Pond came up as an example, which is weird because that's a pond, not a reservoir. So I don't know why. Um... What about the other one? Down here, closer to Lucin, right? Not far from Lucin Airport and the Grain Shed property here. There you go, Graham. There you go, Graham. Graham, shed, shed. Okay. This one here. Rabbit Spring Reservoir, another one where fish could be. And the only reason why this one, second of importance and interest because this was pl this was named as a, a location of interest by uh, some people in the background and one of the individuals bibbins if you remember bibbins name we's are passing it on saying that owl spring this area here place of interest which should be searched that's what bibbins believed okay why what does bibbins know why this area Anything out of the ordinary about it? Don't know. But if you tie in with the 29th of May 2022, a fishing expedition somewhere, and you've got Rabbit Springs, which isn't too far away, okay, here, what did they do? Fish or dispose? And as well, more think about it, Rabbit Spring Reservoir nearby, the location given was by someone called Prospector Gold on YouTube that claimed that Dylan's body, Dylan's remains, part of it was found at Rabbit Spring Reservoir. So what, 29th of May at the time, they went down here to dispose of Dylan or a part of him, and then later, police found him? Mm. But but you got to be realistic with the, the family and the, the way the case is going. It's still been described as Dylan has not been found. So likely, possibilities... What was said on YouTube comments was BS, but still document it and make possible links between these locations. Just so happens to be a reservoir, and today we've been looking at them because of the fishing, right? Sure, maybe ponds can incorporate fish too and lakes and things in between, but you got to take in mind that we'd be here all day looking at every single one. So I just wanted to try and limit it, filter it down so it's still practical, okay? Just make sure we're facing the correct way. I believe we've looked at every single one, okay? If there's any hair that stand out to you as the likeliest of one, that one there, or the named ones down here, leave it in the comment section down below, okay? So what we've transitioned onto now is a second lot of comments from the previous video, okay? If you have just suddenly joined and you want to know more about the main part of this video, you need to rewind back right now, okay? So let's arrange the comments to the newest. This is to do with what we talked about yesterday, okay? Probably more to do with the Bob Farrell salty pancake situation, okay? Maybe a little bit of talk on Dylan Browns as well. We just see what's mentioned here. Cleo, surprised. Uh, yeah. Skeptical, calm as a beep. Okay. Robert, full interactivity requires full interaction, including time issues involved. I on WRW time. Okay, I think that might mean me. Badger, confused, scratching her head. Could you explain? I don't understand. Me neither. I do have a punctuation issue. Okay. So the Burger Man from Burger Kings. Cleo, enjoying the video. That's good to know. 
fed up with racism. Shut up. No one is interested. Oh, is that so? Why 600 people watched it then? At the time, it was about 269, but it's gone up since. Okay. 100 people were watching live as well at the time. So it must be of some significance to people out there. Confluence returning back saying, in all seriousness, I tried taking the quiet road and that only empowered the perpetrator to reuse a slanderous, previously stricken and removed video all about me again, even when I was off YouTube fighting cancer. Though I agree when someone has nothing left to lose, it can get bad. However, I also believe it's our responsibility to hold the perpetrators accountable for their chosen criminal acts to help prevent others from falling prey to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't always just have to apply to criminals. It can apply to normal humans that haven't done anything wrong up to a certain point where they've been dragged into it and they've lost out on things and things have been taken from them. And then they go dark, do dark things, but just because of the situation they've been in. So yeah, the collateral damage can have knock-on effects down the line, right? If you're just minding your own business but get caught in it. Blue Diamond saying, or Blue something, saying, oh, was that quick care? Okay, so busy at the time, but Blue did pop on in later in the video. Okay, so that's understandable. Org, the ogre. Sorry, Rafi, my big Shrek fingers got clogged sometimes. Don't worry. If you do get clogged, Org, contact Dale. You know, 24-7 speed dial. It's fine. Glenn, thumbs up. He watched. Mona, absolute favourite. Bob who? Who the hell is Bob? Bob who? Bob Hope. Um, Bob the Builder. Uh, barrel in a feral. Feral barrel. Feral animal. I don't know. But, you know, if you're wondering who Bob is, Bob is a person who's bold. Okay. Um, I think he wears glasses and he prefers white socks. And he's fairly good at slot machines. Bob, in more recent time, has done his own videos about Dylan Rounds. Supposedly, Bob Farrell was around since day one of the Dylan Rounds case and has been following it closely. Some people don't agree with him. Supposedly, Justin Rounds despises him, but then that's what Jim Terry said, so you don't know if it's true or false, to be honest, at times. But, uh, yeah... Bad July saying, we need a dodgy doggy daycare for the adult children that play in chat like Org, Dale, Graham, Fast Eddie, and yes, I'm guilty too. So Bad July, despite being a badger, is behaving like a dog. Okay, maybe it's time to get the dog leash out. Okay, can we handle this many dogs at once? Maybe. I think what we could have is a bit of a cat fight, dog fight on our hands. Okay, the degenerate dogs need taming, controlling. That can be done, don't worry. As said early on in this video, what can be arranged will be. This person with a very dodgy username saying, sounds like I want to suck Jim Terry off. One hour of this is weird. Suck it, suck it, you lower end league sucker. So I think this person assumes that I play indoor arena football. Well, not far from it because as I demonstrated in one of the previous videos, I did kick a ball about inside. Inky is a witness. She can prove that. Um, but I did actually manage to kick the ball and I didn't fall over. So I must be doing something right. Okay, maybe it's just the type of shoes I was wearing. Well, <laughs> I think it was at the time. Maybe that's the, the, the difference. But yeah, most likely this person is a whiny individual. Default profile once again. Pretty simple as. Ah, Mr. Latin guy has shown up. Let's see what he says. Um, hello, Warlight Ref. Jim Terry and Mark Terry have always caused and started the majority of the trouble. And I and I will have Watch Her Crazy's back every time. I just added her name into what I had to say to be snarky and cute after we had to remind Jim Terry how he has an obsession with sticking things into holes, which at one time he suggested doing to a member of Watcher Crazy's family. Okay, 
But if Jim Terry is obsessed with sticking things into holes, what does that mean for Salty Pancakes? Because didn't Salty Pancakes said he wants to stick something up Ron Tello's rear end? And that he, he wanted to do something to the shack lady's mouth. So I think there's a bit of sexual frustration going on over time. Okay? Don't know which way it's going to go, but I think we've seen that pattern and reference over time. Now, I know people can jump in now and say, what? Well, that's rich coming from warlike Raph, the, the nipple uh, prodder, twister, and puller. Yeah, 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 but that's more taking the piss, okay? There's a difference, okay, between being really passionate and like, oh, yeah, I really want to do this right now. Come on. And then simply saying, yeah, man, look at this. Look, it's inverted. It's pointed to the ceiling. You can tell which one's exaggerated and which one expresses a level of passion and intensity, okay? And watch your crazy will know um, exactly what's being talked about here, okay? Anything else? Latin guy says, this is the spark that caused the fire that ended the live stream. I thank Bob Farrell for being open-minded and allowing everyone into his channel, but this must include Fumble Nuts, Ruben Sanchez, and Lay in the Pipe, and an agreement from Jim Terry and Mark Terry to be well-mannered when they are guests to Bob's channel. Watch your crazy and I were the only ones that have issues with Jim Terry and Mark Terry and were allowed to tell the truth whilst being timed out repeatedly. And it's clear if you listen to the show that Jim Terry lost control and as usual, disrespected and gave out headaches to everyone. Want there a follow up where people were saying that Jim Terry apologised to everyone for giving them a headache or something. I mean, to be honest, you probably could get a headache from just listening to Jim Terry's voice. I mean, okay, he shouts, but is it necessary to shout? Okay. I mean, I, to be honest, you know, if you're going to be around Bella V, Bella V, then I'm sure you can handle Jim Terry, right? But I don't know why it is with all these like loud voices and everything. As said, once again, I can do a loud voice, but it's, it's a bit more of a piss take, okay, at times. So it's not like full on. Okay, so shout out to Mr. Latin Guy for popping on in and uh, just giving some context behind the stuff. Let me know your thoughts in the chat to this. Uh, Bob, we've got Bob Farrell back here once again. Bob, just see what he says. I watch your stream almost all of the all of them. I like to read the chat and see who is talking about me and what they are saying. Sometimes it's better not to comment and just listen and read. Good stream, thanks, Bob. Okay, so it's good that Bob found the video interesting and um, liked it. That's good. And how he does, you know, watch them in the background. I I, I get that. Um, I guess leaving comments can cause bit of tension and friction with others depending who shows up and as well Bob you know maybe it doesn't apply to you but I guess for other people out there sometimes maybe one can't comment on someone else's channel because they might be connected to darker forces out there and there's a dog leash effect in place kind of like in the past with Miss T, Betty Hayward and some others but every time it seems to fade but it might take some time but, you know, it's good that Bob Farrell does watch along because I have done some videos just giving a few opinions and analysis of the situations. Maybe he finds it helpful in some way and so on. If uh, Bob Farrell has any questions, list them in the comment section and maybe they can get answered. OK, is that it for the comments overall? OK, so we are now up to date. So you didn't see my face as much throughout this video because we're just like transferring from uh, one bit of material to another bit of a change for once, change of scenery instead of just sat here talking in front of the camera as it is. Um, I said, let me know if there's any places what we looked at today that stand out to you, if it tells a story. If you got any other ideas of events and backstories to what may have occurred on the 29th of May 2022, the day after Dylan was killed, with Don Hatley, uh, Brenner's whereabouts movement, feel free to add it in down below. Okay, in the comment section. If you've got questions, that too. Grievances, that can be done as well. I mean, the craziest thing was I actually did, you know, the, the talk about the reservoirs and all of that. I actually recorded it earlier and the map wasn't processing. It was taking too long. So I decided to end the recording and 
um, turn the phone off, but I think I turned the phone off before the recording processed, so it didn't save. So I had to repeat everything. The definition of insanity. Try, you know, talking about everything all over again, but using different words so it doesn't sound as repetitive. This is why sometimes when you do this one take on the go, single flow, no script, if you've got to replicate it afterwards, it, it just isn't always possible. So it really has to be done in one go because it's just so much harder to do if you retry because it's questioning, have you said this already? Are you not? Uh, messy. But I think the video is reasonable enough. Let me know if you learned anything new, found anything of interest. Um, any background tension drama has said, you know, last night it was proven that it could be under control whilst talking about that stuff, which could be triggering to some people, but it was fine, again. It could be ironic that tonight it could be even more chaotic, but there we go. You know, if you've got dogs in the chat here and there, some uh, rap, rap, is it rapid or rabid, uh, rabid dogs, whatever, and you've got ogre time as well, Org with his massive hands getting in the way, you know. It can happen, but we can do alternative videos another day, a different theme, just really outside of the box, very loose, very casual, but, you know, more fun than a seven-hour uh, slideshow of photos of plants, <laughs> okay? Dale does not want to relive that no more. So, let me know if you've got any new owl bags, any butterfly bags, any new crocs, and we'll leave it there, okay, for now. We'll see what happens next, time will tell. For now, thanks for watching, goodbye and good night.